catheter-associated urinary tract infections, or CAUTIs, are one of the most common nosocomial infections. Poorly managed Foley catheters can be a significant factor in the development of these infections. There are many strategies that can and should be implemented to minimize the risk of developing a CAUTI, including things like hygiene and bag placement. But in this video, we will demonstrate another important strategy in the fight against CAUTIs, and that is avoiding dependent loops in the Foley tubing. So what is a dependent loop? Dependent loops are formed when part of the tubing of the Foley drops to create a U-shape or a loop. When these shapes occur, it halts the ability of the draining urine to empty into the Foley bag, and instead, it sends stagnant in the tubing. Bacteria in the stagnant urine multiplies, and there is a significant risk that the bacteria can make its way more easily back into the bladder, creating a cauti. After a Foley has been inserted, the goal of the nurse and the PCA is to maintain the Foley tubing so that urine can completely empty into the Foley bag without getting stuck in any of these dependent loops. The two main aspects of accomplishing this are bag placement and tubing management. The Foley bag must always be below the level of the patient. This allows urine to drain into the Foley bag by gravity alone. You have probably seen Foley bags being placed on top of patients during transport. This is unfortunately fairly commonplace, but doing this is a significant risk factor for the development of a cauti. Urine has no downward pull to drain away from the patient, and the urine can easily back up to and make its way back into the patient's bladder. Not only can this lead to bacterial infection, but it can also cause retention issues as well. Foley bags must always be kept below the level of the patient, even during transport. When placing the Foley bag, there are primarily two location options on the striker beds. The first is near the center of the bed. There is a small open rectangle cut into the bed frame that is used primarily for the placement of wrist restraints. The second is at the foot of the bed. There is a bracket positioned near the bed's foot break. Although Stryker intended for this to be used for Foley bag placement, it is not appropriate for use with the barred product. If the Foley bag is hung from this bracket and the bed is appropriately positioned in the low position, the Foley bag will touch the floor and allow for significant contamination of the Foley system, potentially leading to cauti. Another commonly seen placement of the Foley bag is in the bed hinge. This is also not appropriate because it could cause damage to the bed or the Foley system when the bed position is changed. With the bag placed appropriately, you now need to manage your Foley tubing. If the bag is located in the middle of the bed, there's a lot of extra tubing between the catheter and the bag. If left alone, it will create a dependent loop. We can see that the two big problems with urine flow are first, the large U-shape that developed as the tubing dropped below the bag, and second, with this metered bag, the tubing rigidly enters the top of the meter, and this creates a peak to the tubing that the urine cannot clear from a lower position. BART has given us a tool to help overcome these issues. It is the small green sheet clip that is attached to the tubing. This sheet clip should be used to attach the tubing to the bed sheets in an attempt to create a tubing shape that allows the urine to always be moving down until it empties into the Foley bag. Here you can see the sheet clip holding the tubing away from the patient. This has significantly reduced the size of the dependent loop that was seen when no sheet clip was used, but there is still a dependent loop here that must be removed. By moving the sheet clip further down the bed, the tubing is able to allow a consistent downward track for the urine to reach the bag, and we can see that no urine is left sitting anywhere in this tubing. With the bag at the foot of the bed, there is significantly less extra tubing between the patient and the bag, but if left on its own, dependent loops will still form. Clipping the tubing higher on the bed can help minimize these loops, but be aware of how the rest of the tubing is hanging. If it hangs off the side of the bed, it will still create a dependent loop. If the tubing is clipped higher and sits flat on the bed, it may not give the downward track like we were able to create by snaking the tubing when the bag was in the other position, but it also does not create any dependent loops or force the fluid back up towards the patient at any point. I was not able to get the perfect results with this bag placement that I was with the bag in the other position, but this is still effective. Once you've positioned your Foley bag and tubing perfectly and avoided any dependent loops, your work's not done. Every time that patient moves or repositions the bed, that tubing's moving as well. Every time you enter a room with a Foley, you should be assessing the tubing and if necessary, manipulating it and reattaching the sheet clip to allow for full emptying into that bag. Your work with a Foley is never done until that Foley is removed. So be diligent. Your attention to detail could save a life.